Hello, it's Alina from Xactimate Mastery, back with another Tuesday Tech Tip. Today we're going to talk about an underutilized tool that will help correct mistakes in reports and help you never set up another zero line item again. Stay tuned. So let me show you how this tool works. All right, so you're rocking and rolling. You've got all of your estimate items going here, adding all of your roofing items. And I think, yeah, I have a pretty good looking estimate here. I'm going to go ahead and send this up. Well, if you go to your print screen and we take a quick preview here, if you don't preview your report or if you just get in a hurry, you have a stack of estimates that you need to write, you know, they're sitting on your desk, sometimes these errors are not quite as apparent as you think. So I'm looking over this. This looks great. No problems to see here. Yep, got a pretty good estimate on my hands. I'm ready to send this out. When in actuality, I have a zero quantity line item. And it's kind of apparent right now because it's right in our face. It's like in the first page. But when you have like 40, 50 line items that you're working on, these get lost and they're not as apparent. So let me show you the number one tool, the easiest way to never send up a report with an uh, incorrect or a zero line item ever again. What you're going to do is go to the complete tab. I'm going to left click on complete here. And I'm going to click on submit required information. I think about 5% of people that I know who have used, you know, I've taught in the past uh, have ever said, oh, I knew how to use that. So this is a tool I think is very underutilized, but yet very important. So I'm going to click on submit require information. Again, we're in an estimate. We're in the complete tab. Okay, so submit required information. And here you'll see a list of errors. Okay, now some of these errors are fine and I'm going to ignore them because I don't want to cure them. But the number one error that always pops up if you have a zero quantity line item, right there, zero quantity line item or unit price. And I can actually edit it right here. I don't have to go back out to the estimate. I can just hit edit and I say, ah, yeah, there's five turtle vents on that roof. Cure that right there. You'll see a nice check mark you feel real good about that because you got your green check mark there and that issue is cured now you'll see that I have date contacted is empty date received these generally are empty as a contractor um, I'm not required to have to fill in these fields adjusters usually are and that's why they have this red flag for them but as a contractor no reason to really fill these out uh, claim number I probably would want to fill that out there policy number is nice if the claim number is entered wrong we could put that in there and then type of loss is always good to fill out so they know that you're on the same page. You're not calling it wind when they're calling it hail, what have you. So that's always a uh, good thing to fill out. So I do, generally do cure those things. Um, looks like I never filled out my address. So it caught that as well. So we can put in here just a sample address. So it helps you catch these errors that you might otherwise go miss, uh, missing, you know, uh, when you get so busy and things are stacked up and people are, you know, needing so many things from you, it's hard to keep, you know, all the details in, in place. And that's why I love this inspection wizard is what it's called. Wizard. Um, you can remember that. That's what this tool is called. It's called the inspection wizard. So I love it. I use it all the time. Every estimate I write before I go to print, I always run the inspection wizard. So that's kind of my mode of operandum. I'll go to estimate items. Then I'll fill everything out then go to complete, submit required information, then I go to print. And back to that submit required information field here. Notice I haven't cured these issues. That's okay. You don't have to cure them. I just click finish and that'll take me out of that screen. Now, sometimes if you're dealing with overlap on waste, like let's say, um, let me see, for an example, we have roof felt, but we want double coverage roof felt for low slope or a steep pitch. There it will like hang up in this inspection wizard and not want you to leave until you give an explanation. So there'll be this little explanation box here that it'll want you to type something in. I just always put because Alina says so. And then I put click finish. So sometimes that's one of the only ways you would get hung up in that wizard is if it wants you to give it a, a piece of information or like this little blurb, this dialogue box. Just type in whatever, it could be gobbledygook, and then just click finish and it'll let you out of there. So that's one of the only funky things that sometimes happen. Now, I wanna to get to the elephant in the room. The name of the video is zero is better than 10,000. And the reason I'm saying this is a lot of people build their macros with 10,000 as the quantity. I don't know if you've ever 
dealt with people who have told you to build your macros that way. It's been circulating for a while that your macros should have 10,000 in all of these fields, right? Because you're going to catch that. That's something that you, you'll you run your report uh, preview and you'll go, $9 million in Gable Cornice returns? That's odd. And then you'll know to go back and change those quantities. I say no. Use a zero on your macros. If you'll look at my macro here, pretty much everything is zeroed out unless I know that I, I want like two hours for scaffolding, what have you. But what those zeros do is if you forget to delete a line item off your macro, when you run your inspection wizard, it'll tell you zero quantity. Look at all my zero quantity line items, guys. Okay? If you have 10,000 in there, it's not going to catch it. It's going to rely on you to catch that error. So that's why I advocate if you're going to use the quantities in a macro, always turn them to zero because that will catch any of these line items that you didn't delete off. And, you know, the way that I use macros is I go through and I use this like a checklist. So I delete off what I don't need. So if we didn't have a permit, I would delete it. If we didn't have to get the a bid item, I'd delete that, right? So I just go down the list. But sometimes when I'm looking up, hmm, do we have a low slope, you know, on this roof? I'll go off, I'll look at my eagle view, come back, and then maybe just forget to fill out that field, or maybe we don't have it. That's where the zero is going to catch it every time, especially if you're going to be using the inspection wizard, which catches all of those errors. So please use it. I love it. It's a wonderful tool. It saved my life so many times. I advocate the inspection wizard be ran on every single estimate from here on out. This has been Alina Wilson with Xactimate Mastery. Please subscribe below and check out our other videos. Also go to our website at www.xmatemastery.com and take a look around. This is all for this week. I hope you guys are having great success in your business and we'll see you next time.